It's going to re-tackle up this rod. Uh, like I say, I'm going to give it an hour, hour and a half, so it gets one back out. Got to be free rod fishing, so um, I use tubing all the time. Uh, a lot of lakes that I fish always had like a leader band, so I've just got used to using it. Even if I can use leaders, I always stick to tubing. Really nice and simple, stops tangles. Um, weedy green all the time. I think it just blends into everything. I think, you know, obviously there's the theories on uh, matching the lake bed you're fishing, but I'll just stick to this then. Tail rubber. And uh, quick change hybrid clip from a fine one. Absolute godsend these are because quick change in your rigs, anti tangle setups with the anti tangle sleeves. All nice and simple. I sort of, in recent time, just st sticking to two rigs, you get all complicated and wrapped up with all certain bits that are out there at the moment, each their own, you know, it's confidence. But, uh, just narrowed it down to a couple of rigs, like a simple knot that's not bottom bait, wafter style rig, um, hinge setup, which obviously that section will be fished on like a naked shod. Nice and Palomar knot, nice and simple. One thing I've been using recently, is if I'm sort of short range fishing, is uh, one of the heli leads that we do. Because the flat base to it, I think, it's great for feeling the lead down actually, it gives you a good reading what you're fishing over. And the little ring as well, that fits nice on a hybrid lead clip. They like the little ring on it, I like, because there's sort of less movement with a swivel. If you have a swivel on it, you see there's a lot of movement in it, but that just reduces it as well. I think for hooking properties as well. All the percentages, it's all, it's all about percentages in your fishing, as we know. But I think that's a good little touch. Put four on, so we are chucking 90 yards. A bit of a horrible winter day, sort of chucking into it, but sort of cutting across as well, the sort of southwest loo we've got. That's it, really. Nice and simple. Don't think that you get too complicated, really. Let's get the business end on. Fresh rig out. I tied a few this morning, actually. I think I was getting a bit ahead of myself, I think I was going to have a load of action. You see, quite long rigs I fish, sort of 12 inches a lot of the time. I think everyone's fishing a little bit too, too short sometimes. I think give them a bit of rope, sort of. You always end up going back to what you used to do years ago. I remember when I started, you know, fishing like this and have good results. And I think with a slow sinking up bait, obviously when they're feeding, bits are wafting around, it sort of goes back further in the mouth. Got a bit more, you know, movement. And obviously now we've got the Kamakuras out, Wiregate 4, you know, absolutely deadly, you know. I think that's one of the biggest edges available commercially in carp fishing now. You know, there's been a lot of uh, sharpening over the years, you know, sort of the stones and bits that have been commercially available. I was never any good at it. I was useless, really. Uh, I had a go at it. I, I tried it on Elstow and had a few aborted takes on it. So I sort of just stuck to uh, ones out of the packet. Obviously, the nail test I've always done. But since using these, these are an absolute game changer, you know, sort of the hook holes are so deep. Um, I think, obviously, where they're whizzing back in, you. you you catch them a lot quicker when they're coming on the way out as they're adjusting what they're taking in their mouths. But, um, yeah, take that wide gate, take that anywhere in the world and catch carp, you know. Carp in the UK at 50 and, you know, in France, 60 on them, you know. And, uh, yeah, devastating, really. Right. Always use an anti-tangle sleeve. The hook link I'm using is the Dark Matter 25, sort of a, a semi stiff sort of property to it. I like that again, you know, sort of um, sort of resets itself really and sort of kicks out. Because I'll show you my hook baits in a minute, how I do it as well. It sort of will blow your mind really how it sits, first of all, but over time it will uh, present how you want it to. So we'll get on to that. I think we'll show you the sort of the way we mount the hook baits. Now faithful salty squids. Remember old Dave Smedley told me to get on these years ago on here, and uh, 
I listened to what he had to say because he caught a lot of carp out of here over the years. And uh, the night I welded one of these on, next morning I had the old porky on the end. And uh, never looked back really, used them ever since and had quite a few of the 40s out of here on these. Perfect, exactly how we want it. Just gonna put a nugget of foam on, just uh, obviously stop the hair tangling, and again, protect the hook point. It's uh, on the cast, you know, make sure it's perfect. Old famous lick and stick, I've seen that somewhere before. She's ready to go. stepped up with Elf for fishing for the big numbers, bigger hit, multiple bites, you know, <laughs> how we've sort of moulded and the sort of the breed of angle you'd say, it's like, we're not happy with one, you want nine, 10 and beyond, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not enough, you put it back and it's forgotten, you know, it's on to the next one. In anything really, the more you do it and the more you experience it, so i.e. catching fish, you can only but learn from how that's happened or why you didn't catch that day. And the net's falling down. It's all going tits up hell, isn't it? It's all falling apart from hero to zero. I fished with them and they made me better anglers, you know, learning, sitting, listening, you know. It never hurts to, to listen. I, I'm, I'm, I have, I say, I'm never an innovator, I'm, I'm, I'm mimic, do you know what I mean? Imitator, I've always said, I sort of learn. Buddy up with the good anglers, you're going to learn from how they catch.